So in the previous uh, session, we were looking at the various types of uh, frames possible in case of a CAN uh, inside the CAN protocol. Okay. So CAN messages can be of four types made up of four different frames. As you can see here, first one is a data frame. It has a specific structure. Extended, you can even extend that if you the data is not sufficient, right? So then you have a remote frame, right? And uh, the error frame as well as the overloaded frame, right? So these are the four different types of frames possible. So each frame has its own uh, requirement and the specifications to be met, right? Then only you'll be able to send the specific type of uh, frame. Okay, and they serve a specific uh, purpose, right? In the inside the protocol. All right. So the next topic that we are going to see here is uh, called as the bus arbitration. This is a important aspect of any protocol. How uh, the controller of the bus, right, hands over the uh, control to some other device, right, is called as a bus arbitration. Now we know that in CAN, right, every device has a capability to become the uh, bus master. Right, everybody can send the message. Right, any device can, connected to the CAN can send message to the right other device. That's why the bus arbitration here becomes very important. Uh, unlike uh, other microcontrollers, right, or microprocessors, where you have only one uh, controller, right. Uh, so the, the bus arbitration is not so important over there. Only the arbitration that might take place is between right the I/O device and the uh, uh, the processor or a controller in such cases, okay? So whenever a external device sends a message to the processor or the controller, right, arbitration used to take place. Okay, but here it is slightly different. So let's uh, look at the bus arbitration. So as the name suggests, right, the arbitration is a process which decides the owner of the canvas. Okay, if two nodes started messaging uh, the, at the same time. Correct, right, so arbitration, perfect. So uh, every protocol should uh, have the arbitration procedure. Okay, uh, arbitration is the process is a process which is used to decide okay that process decides uh, the hmm. which decides the controller Yes, this is the controller of the bus when two or more, I can call nodes, two or more nodes start sending message right or broadcasting the message uh, simultaneously so if i tell there is a queue right it will be served in order okay whoever comes first first come first serve. but simultaneous means we need to take it okay so what happens when uh, more than one node start transmission at the same time on the canvas right so can bus standard says that there are two fields of the data or the remote frame that can that that is enabled to make a decision of the arbitration message or the can time right so this is the this is specific to the can right you need to look at two different fields all right so hands third b CAN standards, we need to look at two different fields. So two fields of the data, or you can even look at the remote, 
because both have the same field. Okay, oh sorry, I'll remove my mistake. Let's remove. Remote uh, frame that decides the process of the arbitration. Okay, right. So that means what are the two? The first one is the identifier. What is the size of identifier? If you remember, this is one bit in size. Okay. Also, we have another field uh, that is called as the RTR field. This also we have seen. Okay. This is RTR. That's also going to be one bit in size. Okay. So let's try to look at the example to understand this all right so let's say that there are two different uh, what do you call two ecus uh, right so let uh, ecu <coughs> there is a ecu one right whose identifier is uh, Okay, zero x two three four. Okay, and uh, there is another ECU that has an identifier zero x say three five two. Right, both of them are willing to transmit. They transmit simultaneously. They transmit simultaneously. All right. Now the question is who will actually transmit the data first out of them? All right. Now uh, we'll check right uh, how this is going to be applied. So let's try to write the ECU one and ECU two separate. This is ECU one, and I'll write the ECU two as well. So let's write the ECU1. So what is the uh, ECU1 sending now? So anyway, I have to send the data in the same order. So first you have the start of the frame. Then you see it's, uh, I should send uh, two, right? Then three, then four, I guess, right? So that's the identifier, right? So let's try to write that. So this is zero, one, right? I'm trying to write the identifier completely. Zero, 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 one, right? Then one, I think, one, one, uh, zero, one, zero, zero, right? Four, three, right? And two, okay. So two, three, four, that's what I have written here. So followed by the CAN data. So this is the identifier, the address which you are sending. Right, I'll, I'll write a bigger separator. Okay, so after this, you can maybe you will write the CAN data. All right. Now, I write the similar thing for uh, the ECU2. Right, so it's a 0, 0, 1, then it should be 3, right? So 2 plus 1. Okay, so this sends 1. Uh, so below that, I'll write what exactly the CAN is going to send. Okay, so this is the CAN data, right? That will be, so when they are same, you don't have, you don't have to mind because that's the same data, right? zero, zero, this is one. Now you see there is a difference that is coming into picture right over here, right? So what exact, correct. So whoever is sending zero, that will be sent, right? So this is zero, correct. So this zero comes into this place, right? After that, you don't have to write this. You, don't, you will never send this, right? So I, I'll just write here, correct. Okay, let me. Uh, 
perfect. So here I'll write, uh, right, uh, this is actually closes the arbitration. Right, so can data will follow after that. So it's the same thing will be because 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. Can actually the whatever the two lines of can carry the same thing. Okay, so that is can data. So this is how it happens, right? Uh, internally, I can actually mark uh, one thing here. So this is the point where let me just try to make it in this way. So this is the point where uh, ECU1 wins. Okay, where wins the arbitration? Because, right, the logic says that it is zero. That's going to be. So normally what happens is that you are actually trying to perform the AND operation bit by bit. Okay. So logically, internal circuit, what circuit performs? Circuit simply performs the AND operation, right? So the result of AND operation will be zero whenever, right, the other bit is one. So that's where you decide that who is going to be the winner. Okay. So that's one thing you need to remember. Logically speaking, inside the circuit, what happens? Circuit simply performs the AND operation between EC1 and EC2. Correct? Okay. So whoever wins, right, will be decided by the one who sends a zero first. Okay. SOF, start of the frame, right? And uh, anyway, I think other part I already have written, loses arbitration, so ECU2 loses, right? Now, the idea is simply that uh, in the identifier part, right, where whoever sends the dominant in AND operation, which is the dominant, the word dominant stand for zero in, in this case, because you are always performing the AND operation. Right, ECU1 sends the dominant zero first compared to the ECU2, so ECU1 win. Right, now how the uh, ECU2 comes to know that, right, uh, how it is going to uh, understand that uh, I lost this arbitration, It be, there is a concept called as bit monitoring. Okay, have you heard of the word bit monitoring? This is again there in every uh, communication protocol, wherein Whenever a device transmits something on the bus, it actually checks immediately after that, after it sends something, it checks what's the value that is present on the uh, particular bus just to make sure that what the, the transmission, th there is no transmission error. Okay, so it, I'm sending, I, I'm the, right now I'm maybe, I, I'm trying to send some data on the, on the bus using a protocol. Immediately I send a bit, right, I'll check the bit check the bus saying that okay whether whatever i sent is there if it is right proceed further next bit once again check right like that the the idea behind that is just to verify that there is no error transmission error okay but now you see right ec1 is sending it will definitely check ec2 is sending that's also will definitely check but whenever it sends a one and that particular bit present on the bus is zero it identifies that I lost because I sent one, somebody else sent a zero and it will stop the transmission. Okay, right. So that's very important about the canvas, right? Uh, I need to specify that point over here. So how someone identifies that I lost uh, uh, this, okay? Uh, so I'll write one point here. That is every node, right, uh, that transmits, that transmits so its data on the CAN bus it reads it back it's going to read it back okay just to Verify the correct uh, 
transmission. So this is what is referred to as the bit bit monitoring. So how do you identify if the data read is not same as the transmitted one, right? Then it identifies that. Yes, right. There is I lost the arbit. There, there is an arbitration going on, right? And right, I lost the arbitration. Immediately it will right stop the transmission. Okay. So if the data read right is data read is not the same as the transmitted bit okay this implies right uh, arbitration lost so as soon as it lost it will definitely uh, stop the transmission Okay, so relate this to the example given here, right? The ECU2 will write, uh, okay, whenever ECU2 checks for the CAN bus data, it identifies that, oh, sorry, it identifies that whatever it has sent, right? So far, whatever it has sent is not present on the CAN bus. So it means, right, it lost the arbitration. So it will stop. All right, so that's the first thing. That's a one important aspect called as the bus arbitration. Followed by there is another important point related to the message uh, uh, that is being transmitted. It's called as the message. It's a message identification. Right. So again, it is a CAN standard, right? Any node can transmit a message on the CAN line, right? And every node present on the CAN line, including the transmitter itself, can listen to this message, okay? But the one who can accept the broadcast messages will be decided by a field of transmitted frame, right? We know that its name is identified, okay? <clears throat> So we'll write one point about that, right? So this is again as per the uh, CAN standards. Any node can can transmit. Any node can transmit a message. On the can lines and also each and every node present in a sense they are connected okay on the can lines so including including the transmitter who sent the message okay including the including the transmitter uh, itself can can listen to the message right can listen to message but there's a point behind it the one who can accept these messages right should have something called as an identifier that should match okay so but Let's see. 
to can accept the broadcasted messages messages uh, get i can draw decided by uh, say a specific field okay so of the transmitted message right of the transmitted message right that we are talking about the identifier okay so now that means what is the what is the idea behind this identifier must be unique for each message otherwise arbitration will not win by any node because right there will be a transmission error so this is a very fundamental idea behind the identifier being with, uh, in the sense you, you are updating the identifier okay so therefore the okay the identifier must be unique for each of the messages messages otherwise the arbitration will be lost each time everybody is sending the same identifier means right there is no win no loss right so it means there is no win actually right nobody is able to send the proper message right so uh, will be lost by each time by every node right this means it is considered as a It's a transmission error. Right. So, message identifier field has, right, two significance. So, two points which, which, which are very significant. So, let's write down that now. So, significance of the message identifier so what are the various significances right that we need to understand related to this the one the first point is that it decides the message priority on the camera okay so decides the On a can, right? Uh, we can try to say that this message has more priority by just right, applying the proper identifier. Okay, second. So that's the first point. Let's go to the second point. The second point is that uh, the transmitted message, right, is supposed to be or is relevant to which particular node that also we can specify. So it basically specifies specifies that the the transmitted message is relevant to 
which particular node or which particular ECU that is connected to the CAN. Okay, now, so in order to perform these, right, it actually has a, a two components, right, inside a CAN controller, right, uh, which uh, filters the unwanted message by receiving. So in order to uh, perform that, right, the CAN controller has the uh, two components, right? So I'll write two major components of the CAN controller, right? Normally you see previously we didn't have the concept of this normal controller, uh, sorry, CAN controller. That means the controller uh, there is no single device called a CAN controller and the, the control of each of the device will be done by the each of the ECU itself. If ECU is connected to the CAN, inside ECU you have a small uh, block which performs the control the operation. Okay. But right nowadays it is not like that. You have a CAN controller present outside. Irrespective of which one we are talking about, right? So two components of the CAN controller Okay, uh, to filter, or uh, I'll write used to filter unwanted messages are, right, they are like this. So the first one, it is called as an acceptance filter. So what is an acceptance filter, right? It is the CAN ID, right? Uh, which is allowed to receive at a node. In the sense, every message with this particular CAN ID will received at this node if the there, there is another component called as a mask register, right? Is correctly configured. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the mask register later, but anyway, that, that's the second component. All right, so let's write at the first one. So this is, that is acceptance filter, filter is a, it's a CAN ID. All right, so which is allowed. To receive allowed to receive at a given node, right? So this means the the idea behind the acceptance filter is pretty simple. So I'll write this implies every message with this particular ID, okay, will, will receive, will be received at this node. So I'll, I'll, talk, I'll not talk about the mass, re mass register because it's a, it has not been uh, term yet. So the second component is actually the mask register. So in the above point, there is a condition at the end which says that we will be able to receive this provided mask register is correctly configured. But since I never use the word mask register, I cannot write. Okay, so I'll write that. Here. Right, it's actually a numerical code, right, uh, in which bit number one means that bit of the receive ID is same as the acceptance filter. So if that is same, right, the, the bit number one, so bit number one should match. Then only you will say that, yes, you are going to receive, otherwise you will not receive. Okay, so like that. So mask register is is a numeric bit 
Cool. And which? The bit position number one, bit one, means the bit of the can ID, right? Bit of the can ID. It must be same as that of the acceptance filter. Same as that of the Only when this happens, right? It is a lot of, so, right? Uh, it can it both of them means both of them satisfy means it will accept otherwise it will receive. So you so that the the idea fundamental idea behind, right? Uh, not receiving unwanted whatever messages on the canvas can be achieved like that. Okay. So now we already have used a term called bit monitoring. Now we need to look at that. Okay? So that is the bit. bit monitor so every transmitter reads back the transmitted bit from the canvas just to ensure that right uh, the transmitted data or its integrity is still existing and that process is what is called as a bit monitor right now every node connected to the can network right it may be a transmitter or it may be a receiver right if a node transmits some frame on the can, then all other will be made to listen to that. Okay, everybody is a listener along with the transmitter. Right. So why this is done? Because right. Anyway, all the uh, all the devices other than the transmitter will check because okay, it's going to look for okay whether I have a message. Right. It's like it's it's like a curiosity. Uh, right. To check that whether I have a message or regularly you keep checking. So whatever data that is present on the line, you can you can check that. Okay, so you will come to know that there is a message, and also you can uh, make sure that uh, the message which is corresponding to you, right? You don't miss anything. So this is the reason why you keep listening to it. So this is really related to the other device, but every transmitter will look because whatever data it has put up on the line, its integrity is not uh, missed. Right, so that's the fundamental idea. So let me write that one point here. So that is every transmitter reach back its. It's a transmitted data. Okay, from the from the can bus to ensure the integrity right that whole process is what is called as the bit bit monitor all right so the concept is very important even for right the other terminology which we defined earlier that is called as the arbitration correct so in case of a can bus arbitration that is also going to be decided by the bit monitoring itself. Now you see, right? So CAN was considered to be somewhat advanced, right? That is because using a single technique, you are able to achieve, right, two jobs, right? Normally, you are, it's, it's actually simply the bit monitoring, just to check that whether whatever I am sending is, right, being transmitted on the CAN or, but at the same time, you are doing a second job, right? That is facilitating the arbitration process. Right, when two nodes start the transmission at the same time, right, 
and both of them read back the transmitted bit, right? Uh, one of them have to leave the bus because it loses. How do you, how, do, how it identifies the losing of that? Because it will see that whatever it has sent is not being transmitted. Some other value is being transmitted, right? It sends one, but zero is transmitted. Okay, so the device comes to know that I lost the arbitration and it will stop right the star stop transmitting its own message on the bus immediately so bus arbitration is also going to be a part of this actually we can explain that whenever a question on the bit monitoring is asked all right so but I, anyway i'll not go ahead in that because already the other part we have explained correct so we'll move further to the next important aspect of the can that is called as this word we use several times it's called as a bit stuffing This is also a, a equally important topic, right? Now, what do you mean by bit stuffing? Let me try to define that. So, insertion of a bit of opposite polarity. Okay, after five consecutive bits of the same polarity, if that frame has more than five consecutive bits to be sent, right? I want to send six ones, right? But what I do after five ones, I'll put a zero. Okay, this is what is called as a bit stuffing. Why this is necessary? We already know, we have some idea because there is an error bit which is considered to be, right? Six consecutive uh, ones or so, correct? So just to avoid that, after five, you put a zero. Just to indicate that, okay, it's not error. There is a data that is coming. Okay, so let's, let's, let's uh, first define this. Okay, so this is... Uh, insertion of a bit of the opposite polarity of opposite polarity after five consecutive bits and all bits are all the same polarity if there is another condition if that particular frame which we are talking about has that has more than five consecutive bits of same polar. Right? Is this whole process is called as the bit stuffing. Right, so uh, we have come across this once, okay, and uh, in that particular part, we understood that according to the CAN uh, standards, right, more than five consecutive bits of the same polarity, right, inside a CAN frame, between the SOF, that is a start, to the CRC field will be a faulty frame, correct? So you recall, right? The data frame types in which starting from uh, what you call as the start, SOF, start, start of frame, uh, till, uh, let's say, the CRC, right? Where you check the cyclic redundancy. Until there, you cannot have five consecutive right, uh, bits of the same type, same polarity. So that means if, we, if at all you find something like that, right, that will be considered as what? It will be a faulty, uh, faulty frame. So you, you may have to discard that and you may have to start the process using which you will, you will uh, send these messages again at a later stage, right? So just to avoid that, we are going for a bit stuffing. 
let me give an example also right now. So before that, uh, let me write a point. So as per the CAN standards, as per the CAN standards, more than five consecutive bits of the I can write either zeros or ones. I'll write it as the same for that. Inside the can frame. It's not simply in, inside the can frame. There is a specific region. All right. So between between what and what? Between SOF start of the frame to the CRC cyclic redundancy check feed. That will be considered as. That will be considered as a faulty frame. It will be considered as a faulty frame, right? On the can, on the can bus. Okay. Now, as soon as we have uh, such situation arriving. There is an internal signaling device, right? That actually generates a signal and it will call it as a stuff error. Okay, because it's actual, it's a proper data, right? You cannot simply assign this into what you call as a, a faulty frame. That definition says it is a faulty frame. But internally, what happens is that, right? There is a device which generates a special signal, we call it as a signaling device, right? It will assign such frames where you have more than five or uh, in the sense six or more consecutive ones okay or consecutive zeros will be termed as the stuffed error stuffed error on the can so i'll, I'll just write it below right uh, the frame on the canvas a A signaling device calls such frames as they are going to call it as stuff. Error. So there is a stuff error, okay, on can lines. So it is said to be right. There, there, there exists what is called as a stuff error in that that frame. For example, let us try to consider a situation, right? So uh, like this. So I draw. See, first let me draw a frame. So this is a frame and we will not mark all the fields because we are aware of uh, what uh, frames are. Directly, let me write some fields, okay, starting with, so first one is uh, zero, I'll just write the values, so zero, then I'll write, say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. Okay, let me assume that this is the actual uh, frame which we want to send. So followed by, I'll write one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. Then let me write one, zero, followed by one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven. Let me say this is what I want to say. Now you see, right? More than five uh, consecutive bits are existing in this part of this uh, particular. One is this, okay? I also have another consecutive ones, sorry, consecutive zeros over here, followed by a third set of consecutive, this thing, more than five. Okay, so I'll write, uh, more than five, more than five consecutive bits we could observe over here. So this is one such, sorry. This is one such scenario that we are observing here. I have another situation over here and we have the third situation over here. Now what's the solution? Solution is the bit stuffing. So it's a stuffed error, right? We call this as a stuffed error. So how to overcome the stuff error, right? We will overcome that by inserting stuffed bits. How do you identify the stuffed bits, right? We'll, we'll be following, we'll make a, this is actually, I, I'll write this as the, the original frame, right? So this actually has the, uh, so there is, it's, it's considered as a stuffed error. There is a, what is called as a stuffed error in the system. Original frame has stuffed error. So we'll try to overcome that. So to overcome that, we will perform uh, the stuffing. Okay, so. We'll try to write what is called as a bit stuffed frame. Okay, so now you see, right, there is First one is zero, first bit, this is SOF, followed by, you see, I have seven ones, but what you can send is only five. One, two, three, four, five. Immediately after that, you should put a opposite polarity, right? Followed by whatever is remaining, you'll write one, two, right? Followed by, I can see that I can, I have seven zeros, I'll write five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Put a one over there. So okay, let, let me mark the opposite polarity. One is this. Now I am actually adding a stop bit. Okay. Followed by continue with the remaining numbers. Sorry, remaining bits. So we have two zeros, then a one zero, no problem with that. Immediately after that, I can send, I can see seven ones, five ones will be sent. One, two, three, four, five. Right, I should put a zero over there. This zero is going to act like a stuffed zero. It's a stuffed bit. So after that, right, again, remaining uh, bits of the original message, that, that, that means two ones. Okay, so we will call the added bits as stuffed bits. So we can see that the stuffed bits are added in this particular fashion. Okay, so the idea is that in order to avoid the error, which is termed as a stuffed error, if you don't correct that, it will be definitely classified as the Uh, we call it as a uh, faulty frame. Okay, so in order to avoid that particular transmission error, 
what happens the transmitter is going to insert a bit of opposite polarity after every five consecutive bits of the same polarity right that's what we have shown here in the figure uh, this whole process is uh, called as uh, bit stuffing where on one side that is the receiver side these uh, inserted bits have to be removed to get back your original signal okay original message right so that process of removing now we added is called as a bit stuffing and on the other side you need to remove and that removal procedure is what is called as a de-stuffing okay so let me write in order to avoid such errors. So what are the such errors? Errors standing for the faulty free, more than five consecutive ones. In order to avoid such errors, the transmitter the transmitter inserts a bit of the opposite Opposite polarity after every consecutive bits of the same polarity. Right, so this process is what is called as the bit bit stuffing. Now we have the reverse process, okay, that is done on the receiver side. So on the receiver side, these inserted bits are removed and the actual transmitted frame is retried okay and the actual transmitted frame gets retract okay so this whole process is what we are going to call it as the bit de-stuffing all right so the bit de-stuffing is the one which is responsible for uh, obtaining the actual sent message right actually transmitted message right by removal of the uh, added ones or zeros after consecutive right zeros or ones so that process is called as the bit de-stuffing